the chairman of this session. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm just, uh, we have in this, and I'm, I, I'm professor at the University of Science and Technology in Wrocław, Poland. In this session, we have uh, six presentations. So far as we have already uh, five uh, speakers and uh, we have, uh, the time already is limited. Therefore to be on time, we have uh, 15 minutes. Well, I suggest 15 minutes is all. It's a, it includes the presentation and short discussion. Therefore I suggest to, to have uh, 12 minutes for presentation and three minutes for, for discussion. That's, uh, that's okay. Okay, if, therefore, may I ask the first presenter? It is on advanced, the title is Advanced Speech Angle Control Based on Genetic Algorithm and Particle Swarm Optimization of Fast Turbine System. It will be by Goksu Gurai, the Associate Professor. Please, Professor, if you are ready, let's go, go ahead. Uh, thank you for the uh, uh, introduction about me. Uh, hello, uh, dear participants. Uh, and uh, uh, professor, I, I want to uh, share my uh, screen firstly. Uh, my screen shot is clear. Okay. Okay. I will see it this presentation. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Goksu Gorel. Uh, I'm from Çankaya Kartik University uh, from Turkey. My presentation name: uh, Advanced Speech Engine Con Control Based on Genetic Algorithm. Uh, and particle swarm optimization uh, on fast uh, system. Uh, the outline of my presentation uh, is as follows: introduction, wind turbine, fast system, and uh, wind turbine uh, with fast. Uh, what is the individual pitch con uh, pitch angle uh, and algorithm as genetic algorithm and particle swarm optimization? Result, conclusion, and question. And uh, the aim of the study is compare three methods, uh, classical PI control, genetic uh, uh, algorithm optimized PI control, and particle swarm optimization optimized PI control. Uh, modeling uh, of the wind turbine system using the FAST system. Uh, for this, we will see the differences, uh, optimal rotor speed on wind turbine and, mecha and mechanical loads applied to the wind turbine. Uh, increasing uh, the rotor speed quality of high uh, wind turbines and decreasing the mechanical loss on wind turbine were investigated. By adjusting the blade angle uh, to the nominal wind speed, the rotor speed of wind turbine is maintained at its nominal value. By using control methods, different results can be achieved. Uh, the individual control of blade pitch angle Allowed, allowed us to reduce the mechanical load of wind turbine. The simulation results showed that the uh, individual control of blade peak angle ensures the quality of rotor speed of wind turbine and redu reduce the balanced periodic load on wind turbine. And wind turbine basic uh, uh, mathematical equation, uh, P uh, is main mechanical uh, power uh, in the moving air, and rho air density A, A area swept by the rotor blades, V velocity, and CP power coefficient. And uh, in figure one, uh, wind speed uh, and the wind power curve changing. Uh, uh, and the second, CP uh, power coefficient uh, and uh, uh, lambda for uh, lambda plot for different value of beta. Any change in rotor or wind speed causes a change in tip speed ratio, resulting in the sh in shift in the power coefficient. In the first uh, figure, show us where, uh, where in the uh, turbine the pitch angle is controlled. Uh, the second figure show the uh, connection of the wind turbine or the three phase grid. Uh, here it's connected uh, grid via AC DC AC uh, converter. However, this part uh, was not dealt with in this study. The parameter of the wind uh, turbine used uh, are in shown in table. These parameters are entered as sub block in uh, simulation file. In, in table one, uh, we used uh, a 1.5 megawatt wind turbine uh, was used. 
Um, first system, uh, the impact of the wind turbine system on frequency and voltage stability is becoming more increasingly relevant. The rotor of the wind turbine is susceptible of three types of loads, aerodynamic loads, gravitational load, and uh, centrifugal load. The stresses produce fatigue and vibration in the blades, resulting in the rotor blade degradation. These stress can be overcome by utilizing a good pitch controller, uh, which adjusts the angle of attack of the wind turbine rotor blade into or out of the wind turbine. Different loads uh, are applied to each blade because of the rotor blades has different wind speed. In, in figure, uh, different uh, moment affected the uh, blades and uh, at, Edgewise moment and flopwise moment. As a result, uh, in the future, individual electrical drives could be utilized to adjust the pitch angle, pitch, pitch angle of the blades in a technique uh, known uh, as individual pitch control. Uh, in the first system, we used uh, S function uh, in the matlab uh, as a sub block system in here. And uh, the another uh, figure shows the whole simulation without controller. Uh, a mathematical model of the wind turbine pitch control system created to use and simulate uh, MATLAB simulate. Uh, this uh, table shows us the moment description. This uh, the moment measurements, uh, short name uh, uh, from the blades and description of the moment. Uh, in this model, uh, model, we can see that component is connected the first block to work properly. The first system, uh, the first method helps to calculate the fatigue and extreme load on the wind turbine. Therefore, the first takes the characteristic of the wind turbines to perform the concern, concrete simulation. A mathematical model uh, encompassing the complicated nonlinear dynamic effects of the wind turbine is required for the design of control system. Uh, first, uh, the national uh, uh, the national renewable energy laboratory NREL developed the first model uh, as part of the U.S. Department of Energy sponsored software software development. First uh, is a time domain nonlinear uh, uh, servo elastic modeling tool that combines aerodynamic control, electrical and structural dynamic model. The architecture of the first uh, version 8 uh, model is shown in figure. Uh, before the uh, starting uh, MATLAB uh, FAST simulator, the S functions route must be specified. Uh, FAST uh, offers uh, users ready to use model of the wind turbine and lets user ch users change numerous wind turbines variable in more complex studies. A uh, table displays that FAST uh, models that are ready for use. It's necessary to open the SAR test folder in the FAST folder uh, in the uh, folder set test, there are text files related to wind turbine models. The files related to turbine uh, to be analyzed will start with the name and test number of turbine. For example, uh, if you wish to operate with uh, a 1.5 megawatt turbine with adjustable pitch control and variable speed, you should select the test level uh, like this. And uh, what is individual pitch controller, a pitch angle controller? Uh, changing the pitch angle of the blade is a possible means of limiting the turbine's effectiveness is heavy wind while also allowing individual control. The pitch angle is adjusted based on difference between the needed or and the output power. Uh, the pitch angle can be adjusted by classical control method or use modern methods to obtain relevant results. The control approach adopted in this study based on the wind turbine individual blade uh, control methods. Uh, the separate 
the three pitch angle into two. We use park transformation uh, in the sub block as a sub block in MATLAB simulating. And uh, uh, optimization and model control section. Uh, I will keep this part short so that my presentation time does not get too, too long. The main uh, flow parts uh, of genetic algorithm uh, are shown in the figure. Uh, these are in stage interlaced population, ma major fitness selection, mutation, crossover, uh, and finally optimum solution. Uh, an error value uh, are required for genetic algorithm uh, to work. Uh, this error, ITIA, integral time absolute error. The sum of the time weight absolute errors were was used as performance index. This error can be obtained as follows. Uh, in, in show, it's shown in figure uh, screenshot. Inside the genetic algorithm code, there is a line uh, in the simulation file that runs uh, the main uh, fast file. Fast file. In this setup, uh, this uh, main file is run and the uh, error is obtained uh, after the first iteration and the second iteration will start. Uh, another adjustment screenshot uh, about genetic algorithm and so over time fitness function, name, important parameters and another uh, adjustment. Also another adjustment screenshot and uh, the uh, plot function, best fitness function, best fitness function uh, and, uh, generation uh, uh, numbers uh, changing and best and mean fitness function changing. And our second algorithm uh, for optimizing uh, PI controller and uh, KP and KE parameters of the uh, controller is a particle swap <coughs> optimization. The main flow parts of the PCO are uh, shown in figure. These are installation of uh, algorithmic parameters and swarm position to calculate the fitness of the each particle, uh, update the P best and G best, update the particle velocity and position and termination. And uh, uh, this is uh, some uh, code uh, for uh, particle swarm optimization and uh, simulation file using uh, FAST. And there are a lot of uh, uh, code uh, about uh, particle cell optimization, some screenshot, and finally results. And uh, it can be seen uh, in the figure that uh, PCO uh, curves reach the optimum uh, uh, rotor speed faster than PI and uh, genetic uh, algorithm. And the PI and genetic algorithm, which take uh, 40 seconds to reach the optimum speed of the 45 RPM. Uh, the genetic algorithm method has less modulation uh, shown in figure than the other two, but uh, later. And uh, in individual pitch control uh, results uh, uh, about different controller, PI genetic algorithm and PSA all based PI controller. And the next figure in zoom uh, figured. And it, this is important uh, results. Each head tree value for each blade uh, of wind turbine and have a phase differences of 120 degree between the individual pitch angles. To choose the best uh, of the three control strategy, it's essential to understand how to each blade differ from the others. How to each blade. Uh, the color uh, each three blade out of each uh, blade differ from the others. For each okay, blade, Professor, may, may, I, Professor, may I ask you to go to conclusions as the time is almost 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 out. Okay. Please go to conclusions. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, another uh, uh, pitch uh, blade pitch uh, for one uh, different controllers and uh, results. And uh, first blade flip, uh, first blade Edgar wise moment changing and zoomed uh, figure, and uh, flip wise moment uh, changing uh, different control different controllers and results. 
the pitch angle uh, and final results. The pitch angles of the wind turbine uh, blades are individually regulated low, along with the mechanical loads on the turbine and the low frequency component, these loads are decreased. As a result in table, it's possible to reduce the mechanical load wind turbine part fatigue. According to study in table, mechanical load for all three uh, blades was reduced by average of 44% when compared to PI and PSO uh, methods and by 101% when compared to the PI genetic algorithm in the first line. It's shown. And final conclusion. Uh, in this study, the control of pitch angle is uh, in the wind uh, energy system uh, with different control methods is performed. For this pro purpose, the date, date is obtained from the first software used in the determination of mechanic loads and date for the installed wind turbine in MATLAB simulation. All results are obtained via simulation. Uh, making the simulation realistic and demonstrating uh, consistency between results of the various control techniques applied to each specific pitch angle, uh, pitch, pitch angle are the goals here. To listen, uh, some of mechanical demand uh, on the wind turbine individual adjustment uh, or pitch angle can be suggested as a solution. Thank you for your time and uh, uh, okay, we, thank you, Professor, for the very interesting presentation. Now we have a very little time for discussion. Any questions from the audience? Does anybody have, have questions? If not, I'm just, uh, may I have a question, very short question. Uh, I think I, just a very interesting interesting problem. I couldn't imagine that there's ser such a serious problem with the blade of a turbine. Um, but at the, all of them, they are simulations. Do you plan to make some experiment to confirm it? Uh, actually, uh, the uh, experimental uh, uh, result making it very, very hard. Uh, uh -huh. In ne uh, ne near time, uh, I, I didn't plan uh, any realistic okay. study. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> now we'll go to the second presentation. May I ask, do we have a Chinese, a Chinese presenters? Yes. Uh, hello, Chair. Can you hear me? Who? Okay, okay, Hi. nice to see you. Nice to see you. You are you Huang, right? Yes, you are yes. what's what's your position? You are a professor, student, or doctor? I'm associate professor from Nanjing University of Post and Telecommunications. Uh, University of Post and Telecommunication. Okay, I I visited this this in Beijing. Uh, in Nanjing. And Nanjing, I visited Nanjing at the same time, since I, we okay. have a cl close relationship with uh, Beijing University and, and between Nanjing University. Okay, Professor, you will have a presentation on the title is uh, Low Carbon Economic Multi-Object Dispatch of Integrated Energy System Based on the GAPSO. Please, you have uh, 15 minutes altogether, presentation 12 minutes and three, three, three minutes for discussion. Please go ahead. Please show you uh, your presentation. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, I can't uh, share the screen because uh, someone must quit their sharing screen. Yeah, you have, uh, you, have uh, a, you have a point you can press. Okay, uh, this PPT is the, the former speaker. The former okay, speaker okay, it's already, already I can see you. Okay, fine. Okay, now, now you put, Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Almost yes, but please magnify this a little bit. Okay. 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 It's almost good. It's almost. Oh, good. It's please go. Full, full spring, right? Okay. Uh, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, professor. Thank you, professor. Uh, my name is Yuan. Okay. Um, uh, today, I'd like to. It's my great honor to share the uh, our research. Uh, our study is titled Low Carbon Economic Multi-Objective Dispatch of Integrated Energy System Based on GAPSO. And uh, uh, today, my presentation will cover the following uh, points. In the first part one, I will start uh, with a brief introduction of our research background 
and then comes to the framework of the integrated energy system. And next, I will present the multi-objective optimization, and then is the solution method that will be shown, and uh, finally, the case studies will be uh, presented. The first is the background of this paper, and in recent years, in the several countries have proposed a carbon neutrality energy targets, and the transformation of energy systems has become a research hotstop. As a system capable of uh, coupling multi-energy, achieving high penetrations of renewable energy and improving the energy efficiency, the integrated energy system will take on more responsibility under the carbon neutrality target. And based on this uh, background, and we find there are previous studies uh, that have done very little research on optimizing the low carbon characteristics of integrated energy systems, than which uh, fail to meet the requirements for the low carbon attributes of integrated energy systems uh, in the context of a carbon neutrality. So in this paper, and we develop a low carbon economic multi-objective dispatch of integrated energy systems considering the carbon emission accounting. In the framework of the integrated energy systems, and it can be seen in this, this figure. In terms of electricity supply, it mainly meets the electricity demand of consumers uh, through their upper grade, the various distributed energy resources and the CHP units. The well distributed energy resources, they include uh, photovoltaic, wind energy and uh, battery and storage system. And in terms of gas consumption, natural gas is uh, transmitted directly from the upper gas grid to cost consumers' homes or CHP units through the gas pipelines. And the additional gas tank is added during the trans uh, transmission process to avoid uh, blockage caused by uh, excessive air pressure and uh, transmission rate during the gas transmission process and which may affect the consumer's gas consumption. And the cons customers, the heat requirements are met by an electric boiler in conjunction with their CHP unit. And the next uh, is the multi-objective optimization. And it contains uh, three parts, which are minimum integrated operating costs, the minimum carbon emissions, and also the network constraints. Uh, the part of minimum integrated operating costs that include a light, uh, Latin hypercube sampling, which is used to study the uncertain characteristics of uh, wind power and uh, uh, photovoltaic output. And in order to improve the stability of uh, Latin hypercube uh, sampling and expand the application of it, we use the modified alternating uh, projections <coughs> methods to find our nearest uh, matrix through alternating projections method. And we also consider the user's energy demand response by building the PMV model. The PME is the uh, predicted mean vote. According to China ISO 7730, the user temperature uh, is maintained at uh, 23.5 uh, to 28.5. And the minimum cost objective function proposed in this paper that can be expressed by the following equations, uh, which contain uh, six parts. The costs of purchasing the electricity and the gas energy, the penalty cost of a wind or photovoltaic abandoned, uh, operating costs of the CHP unit, the costs of energy charging and discharging loss, the equipment uh, operation and uh, maintenance costs and the penalty function equation, considering the user's thermal comfort. And the other objective optimization is the minimum carbon emissions. By reducing the actual carbon emissions uh, minus the free carbon emissions obtained by the energy purchase, the carbon emissions generated by the actual operations of each piece of equipment in this system can be obtained. And last but not least is the network constraints. And these constraints uh, maybe include the multi-energy balance constraints, equipment output and inputting constraints, battery constraints, natural gas storage constraints, CHP constraints, and also the constraints of natural gas pipelines. 
And then is the solution method that based on the multi-objective uh, model built in the previous chapter. And this chapter first uh, uses the genetic algorithm, which considers the quadratic form of the objective function. And then use the multi-objective solution method uh, based on GAPSO to discuss the uh, parental front frontal sets. And this paper intends to combine the genetic algorithm with the improved uh, particle swarm algorithm to solve the model and can include the following two parts. And the, the first is the inertial weight. And this paper makes an adaptive adjustment of the inertial weight uh, based on dispersion of the group. And uh, the second, we made the improvement by introducing the elite uh, aging mechanism and the replacement mechanism. And the system architecture uh, of this case in this paper is shown in this figure in which the power grid with a 1,020 kilowatt uh, battery and a storage system, photovoltaic equipment and the wind turbine. The case is implemented in MATLAB and uh, we use Groovy, our commercial optimization solver to solve this problem. And from this figure, uh, it can be seen that more intuitively that in MEC, that's the minimum carbon emissions, the operating cost of system will increase uh, mainly in terms of energy purchase and the purchase from the upper grid and the gas network will be increased and the dependence on external energy source will be greater in terms of renewable energy sources due to the increased dependence on external energy sources, the consumption of renewable energy sources will be reduced to a certain extent and the amount of wind and the photovoltaic abandoned by renewable energy sources will be expanded. In terms of energy transmission, electrical uh, energy storage and the gas tank will be used more frequently. In terms of heating, the penalty cost for charging the thermal comfort of the users will become greater while the carbon emissions of the system will be reduced. The thermal comfort of the system will be reduced. And this table shows the carbon emissions of the system in MOC that's the minimum operating cost and MEC, the minimum carbon emissions respectively. It can be seen in terms of carbon emissions when the system in MEC, the amount of uh, electricity purchased from the upper tire is significantly reduced and the CHP units, uh, thermal electrical coupling can be used to work to meet the shortfall in customer uh, electrical load caused by the reduction in electricity purchase and to quickly feel the lack of uh, heat supply from the reduced output of the electric power. Uh, it can therefore be seen that the economics of direct uh, terminal purchase of electricity is greater than that of direct terminal purchase of gas, and that the carbon emissions of direct terminal purchase of gas are smaller than that of uh, direct terminal purchase of electrical. <clears throat> and the table shows the optimal results of MOC and MEC. Therefore, this session uses the multi-objective optimization algorithm based on the improved uh, epsilon constraint method to solve the optimal uh, objective. And uh, uh, this is the result. And we can see that the optimal solution has 6% uh, lower carbon emissions, <coughs> but 7.3% uh, higher cost compared to the compromise solution. And from the case study uh, analysis, uh, analysis before, we can get the following conclusions. Uh, firstly, the system will correspondingly increase in its purchases to the upper uh, gas grid when in MEC, and the consumption of renewable energy sources will be reduced to a certain extent. And secondly, electricity is more economical and the gas is less carbon intensive in a small integrated energy system for end users. And uh, thirdly, the MOC and the MAC in this paper are not conflicting objective functions. And to a certain extent, MOC and the MAC are coupled to each other through the penalty factor and the joint optimally of MOC and MEC can be achieved by selecting a penalty factor of the appropriate size. Okay, thanks for your listening. Okay, thank you, Professor, very much for a very interesting presentation, and thank you also for keeping in time. That's really that's really nice. Okay, now uh, one question or two questions from the audience. 
Is there anybody who wants to have, have a question? That's on my comment is that it's the impossible. paper is very interesting since that uh, the main problem is management, effective management of distributive energy. Since so far we have no, no effective energy storage equipment and mostly we use the battery. And uh, in this way, we can combine, there might be compromise between the use of electric energy and between the use of uh, production. Therefore, the, I think the main problem is to develop the network. Grid, grid is not effectively developed, therefore we are not very elastic to do that. Okay, therefore, thank you. Did, any questions from audience? If not, thank you very much, Professor, for a very interesting presentation, and thank you for having uh, keeping in time. Thank you very much. Okay, and now uh, we go to the, the, okay. okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Now we go to the third presentation. It will be, be it will be done by our friends from from Turkey, from the Department of Electric Electronics Engineering Bilecik, and uh, uh, from the University Turkey. And uh, instead of today is a change, since instead of uh, of, uh, of Ali Riza Gan, the presentation will have. Uh, Assistant Professor Emrak Dokur, and the title presentation is a short-term solar power forecasting based on SIMDENT and Cornell Extreme Learning Machine. Please, Professor, you have 15 minutes altogether presentation and discussion. Please go ahead. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Emrak Dokur. Today, I will be presenting the study on behalf of my uh, colleague, uh, Ali Rizagun. I'm a co-author uh, in this paper. Uh, I'm an associate professor in electrical electronics engineering department in Turkey, Bilecik University. Uh, mm -hmm. I will try to complete my presentation in about 15 minutes uh, within the time allowed to me. Um, our, uh, I am going to talk about short-term solar power forecasting based on CMDAN and kernel extreme learning machine. My contents uh, have introduction and motivation. Uh, I will give a methodology, same then the, the decomposition methods, and then uh, forecasting methods, the kernel extreme learning machine, uh, case study, simulation results, and discussion. Finally, uh, I'm going to talk about the conclusion. The use of the renewable energy sources contributes to environmental awareness and sustainable development policy. Uh, the inaccessible uh, and uh, non-populating nature of solar energy has attracted worldwide attention. Accurate forecasting of solar power is a, a significant role uh, for the reliability and stability of the power systems. However, the effect of the intermediate nature of solar radiation makes the development of accurate prediction models challenging. Uh, this paper, uh, we present a hybrid model uh, based on kernel extreme learning machine and uh, complete ensemble empirical mode decomposition with uh, adaptive noise, same then for short-term solar power forecasting. Firstly, I am going to talk about the, our flowchart of our study. The main frame, the framework is Firstly, we collected the data and then we normalized the data. Uh, hybrid methods were applied over the three different modules, namely decomposition, forecasting, and then uh, combining the methods. Firstly, the original uh, solar energy data normalized uh, in the decomposition phase are separated into its uh, subcomponents. Uh, in the in this space in this step by different decomposition methods, uh, in the forecasting phase, uh, separate in, it's fit to a uh, kernel ELM. Uh, all subcomponents fit to kernel ELM. The forecasting steps. We don't use to uh, other meteorological data, uh, for example, such as humidity uh, pressure. Uh, we use the sliding window technique, uh, the historical data. And finally, we combine the, uh, uh, the, these forecasting results. Uh, firstly, I am going to talk about the methodology. The uh, CMDAN, CMDAN uh, is an, an algorithm called uh, Complete Ensemble Empirical Mode Decomposition Adaptive Noise. Uh, has a popular, has 
become very popular in signal processing actually. To reduce the mode mixing problem, adaptive white noise is added uh, to improve the decomposition performance. Uh, same then is an improved version is of the ensemble empirical mode decomposition method. After applying the same then uh, process the original signals, uh, a residue signal and uh, intrinsic mode function, the subcomponents are obtained due to the adding normally distributed white noise to original signals using the EI, uh, ensemble empirical mode decomposition, the mode mixing effect is reduced. Uh, the extreme learning machine is an, an learning technique that selects the hidden nodes at random and analytically calculates the output weights the single hidden layer feed forward neural networks, uh, as illustrated in this figure. The ELM has the advantage that the input weights and biases are generated randomly, uh, and the hidden layer settings do not need to be tuned. Uh, those, uh, ELM may easily achieve good performance, good generalization performance uh, at extremely fast learning speeds. Uh, also, we use the uh, RBF kernel function in these uh, steps. Uh, the case study, firstly, we collected the data figure shows the laboratory st structure, the battery systems and then uh, 20 kilowatt converter uh, also uh, in this here, uh, the right side, the left side, the, uh, the recording the process of the data received throughout the system established in November 2020 and has started as January uh, 2021 and a total of uh, nearly uh, 3,900 uh, uh, you can be more close to the to the to the phone since sometimes the voice is disappeared. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the recording the process of the data received the uh, the system established in uh, November uh, uh, twenty twenty has started as January twenty twenty one. Uh, and the total data uh, I will give the we recorded the data back to date. Uh, also, as you seen in this figure, the left side of the figure, the subcomponents of uh, the original data uh, in selected mode function, uh, we decompose the signal by using the CMD uh, methods. Also, to calculate, uh, to uh, compare the uh, model, we use the swarm decomposition methods also. Uh, swarm decomposition methods normally propose a biomedical signals uh, decomposition, uh, but uh, I, we use the uh, renewable energy sources data also. Uh, you can, we can uh, decompose it by using swarm decomposition. Uh, as you see in the figure uh, in here, uh, the test results of the forecasting uh, solar power outputs uh, to to uh, show the superiority of our uh, proposed method, we compared uh, some hybrid models, state-of-the-art models, also kernel uh, extreme learning machine uh, and uh, conventional traditional models and deep learning such as uh, LSTM. Uh, we, as shown, uh, as shown in the uh, table, uh, the root mean square error also we use the uh, some performance metrics, root mean square error, mean square error, and mean absolute error uh, performance metric as shown in the table, uh, root, root mean square error and some performance metric uh, of the proposed hybrid model uh, for uh, January uh, were found to be uh, 0.25, also uh, 0. Uh, 12 and uh, 0, uh, 18 resp respectively. It is what concluded that the model performance was better than the other models. Uh, although uh, the EMD and uh, multi-layer perceptron uh, approach shows the competitive results uh, to uh, our proposed hybrid model. The proposed model has better accuracy according to all mo mo mounts 
Uh, in part particularly considering the amount of the September, it can be seen that the proposed model has a much lower error uh, value. Uh, specifically, the proposed method reduced the rhythm square error uh, performance error metric by uh, nearly uh, six, 67 percentage compared to uh, EMD multilayer perceptor model. Uh, the, while the is from the composition multilayer perceptor is a hybrid model. The standalone canal ELM shows the similar performance metrics for the thumb mouse, such as April. Uh, according to the results in the left side figure, uh, this is a Taylor diagram. Uh, this diagram, uh, the closer the correlation coefficients of value is to two one, uh, the more linear and relation between the uh, actual data and uh, the predicted data. However, the lower standard deviation and uh, the root mean square uh, deviation values on the graph, the higher performance of the model. According to figure, the CMDAN kernel ELM, uh, which is the represented by a black uh, triangle, offers the best estimation results. As a result, uh, overall uh, performance capability of the proposed hybrid model gave uh, the best results monthly. Uh, it is a clear indication that the CMDAN kernel ELM uh, hybrid model can be accepted uh, as a better modeling tool for solar energy forecasting. Uh, the CMDAN kernel ELM model has significantly improved solar power forecasting accuracy, uh, accuracy compared with the implemented model, uh, the other four methods. Uh, it is further verified that the forecasting results of the proposed hybrid model are better than the results of the single model. The proposed method uh, reduced the uh, mean absolute error performance, error metrics, by uh, nearly 50 uh, percentage as compared to kernel extreme learning model uh, in January. Considering the all mounts, the comparison results indicate the uh, proposed same then kernel ELM outperforms other models for all the cases with the lowest error metrics value. Uh, thank you for your participant, dear uh, chairman, uh, all participants. Okay, okay, Professor, thank you very much for a very interesting, interesting paper and for the being in time. We have two more, two, two more minutes. Before this, I open the, the, the paper for discussion. Any question from audience? Does anybody wants to have a question? Okay, when I'm not wrong, I found that uh, your conclusion is uh, the best model for 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 forecast is a multivariate model, is right? And then, then you have to take into account when I am not wrong more accurately the influence of wind speed, temperature, humidity, and so on. Uh, yes. Do you plan to make some experiment results to compare it? Since everything is now what you presented is just is a theoretical investigations. Have you, have you plan? Do you plan to do that in the future? Of course, it, it can be possible. Uh, we have a plan to edit uh, some implemented model and also hardware. We have a plan to okay. uh, real time forecasting uh, modules uh, in the systems. Uh, this is mm -hmm. the offline and then very short term uh, forecasting systems. We have a plan. Okay. Uh, thank you for your comments and contributions. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Therefore, once again, thank you for very interesting presentations. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Now we are going to the next presentation. And uh, the next presentation will be done by uh, Dr. Uh, Ab, uh, Halim Benseta from Algeria. Uh, and okay. uh, the title is uh, Manufacturing of Low Cost Parabolic Dish Concentrating with Manual Dual Axis Tracking. Okay, please go ahead, Dr. And you have also 15 minutes for 15. presentation. For please go ahead. Uh, well, good morning, uh, sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like uh, to quickly uh, introduce myself. I am uh, Vince Khanin, a researcher from Higher School of Signal. So uh, uh, I will uh, present my uh, work titled Manufacturing of Low Cost Parabolic Dish Concentrators with Manual Dial Axis Tracking. So my talk is divided into five main sections. So uh, I will start with the context and object of uh, our work. 
فقر ذاته بتريزنت بارابوليك ديش كونسنتري سيستم نيكست تو ويل ديسكرايب ذا ديزاين بروسيدير اند ترمت ايفاليشن اوف اور سيستم اند وي اي ويل فينيش ويز كونكلوجن اند اوتبوكس So, due to the population and economic growth, global energy consumption is increasing rapidly, in, uh, especially in... Uh, in you present, okay, okay, so sorry, Professor. Could you present us presentations since we don't see any presentation? Just only we can see you. So, I will... Uh, maybe I have a problem. But I should... Oh, in the middle you have a... Okay. Oh, yeah. Now it's good. Nothing so far is nothing. It's okay. Okay, yes, sure, 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 sure. Okay, we can. I can see you, but it's is a is a is a third page. Okay, okay. please go ahead. It, it, it's clear. Okay, it is clear, but it's a third page. We missed first and second page. So uh, in. Uh, okay, fine. Okay, it's okay. It's And this is an okay. All right. So, All right. Please go ahead. So, uh, one of the biggest challenge in the, this century is to meet the ever rising demand uh, of energy in uh, every sector of life. While the conventional energy, as we see here, like coal, oil, and uh, natural gas, still provide the maximum portion of total energy produced worldwide. So, higher consumption of uh, these uh, sources. Uh, contribute in greenhouse gas emission and uh, contribute in global warming of the world. But at the same time, the number of pe people without access to electricity remain inacceptably high. On the other hand, the limited reserve of this uh, source of energy make the search on uh, clean energy, on environmentally and cost-effective uh, energy and sustainable became a priority. So. Uh, as we can see here, the, and then the, the, the increasing paper published, uh, I make research on uh, scopic analysis, and uh, as we can see, the increasing paper uh, uh, on uh, renewable energy. So this research actually is uh, led by China and the United States. So solar energy. Uh, it seems uh, the most uh, the available uh, source of energy in uh, among the, the this uh, other category of uh, energy. So, to harvest in order to harvest solar energy, we need uh, what we call solar collectors. Basically, we have two kinds of uh, solar collectors: the PV collectors that convert. The solar energy directly into electricity, and the other uh, the other kind is thermal collectors. Uh, thermal collectors they use the heat of the solar energy and uh, use it as it is, or transform it to another form of energy. There are basically two types of uh, solar collectors: non -concentra concentrating and concentrating uh, solar collector. So. Uh, uh, according to the motion, we have stationary uh, solar collector and, and uh, solar collector with single axis tracking system and uh, two axis tracking system. And each system uh, have an indicative uh, temperature range depending the equipment and the reuse of the system. So in our uh, in our case, we are interested. In uh, parabolic dish reflector or parabolic dish concentrated in the range of uh, 1,000 uh, uh, to uh, 500 degrees Celsius. So, the motivation of uh, our uh, work is uh, firstly, the, 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 as we said, the, the abundance or the availability of solar energy. As uh, Dr. Jerry Niz has declared that within six hours, these have received more energy from the sun that human uh, kind consume within a year. And as we see, the, the big red square here in uh, uh, with a uh, surface of uh, 255 kilometers 
square could meet uh, all the world needs. The, of course, the, the Algerian uh, Algerian uh, deposit of in solar in terms of solar energy uh, motivate us also uh, to uh, focus on uh, such systems. So, uh, other point is the simplicity of systems of uh, thermal system, uh, except uh, the heliostatic factor, which need uh, high uh, high uh, tech uh, equipment. So other systems are simple to manufacture and uh, to, uh, to to develop in comparison with uh, with the photovoltaic system. So our objective is to realize a very low parabolic dish concentration, very low price, very low uh, very low cost parabolic dish concentrate with DL axis striking system. Uh, that work in uh, that could uh, reach an indicative uh, temperature between uh, one uh, one hundred and two hundred degrees Celsius. So, uh, in solar concentrator, the main property of parabola is uh, uh, is its ability to concentrate sunray at the point we call focal point from its vertex. <laughs> so the, the, the parabola is two dimension. Arc and the revolution of this arc generate a paraboloid, which is surface given to dish concentration. Various parameters are adopted to characterize parabolic concentrations, such as the aperture area, diameter of upper, uh, aperture, focal distance, the rim angle, height of the dish, and arc length. All these parameters and other parameters are uh, 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 control or uh, affect the behavior or, uh, of of uh, any system, any parabolic system. So, uh, incident solar rays on the disk reflector will reflect as a cone A, uh, corresponding to the angular distribution of solar source. When this cone falls on flat target placed in focal plane, the spot is made up. The, uh, the ray from the dish edge will form a larger spot as it's shown in uh, this, uh, as it shown in this figure. The term concentration ratio is referred to accomplished light energy concentration by given collector. Generally, two different concentration ratio. We have optical concentration ratio and the, the geometric concentration ratio. Uh, there are some equation uh, that the model and that, uh, that allow us to characterize uh, uh, our system. So, uh, the most uh, important pa component of parabolic dish concentration are the reflector and uh, the receiver and the base with the tracking system. Now, in this uh, section, we will uh, describe uh, the, uh, the experimental facility fabrication of each part of the parabolic concentration system. So, uh, in, in, uh, in the, this system, the parabolic dish Concentration is uh, the most costly. So, in order to surpass this problem, and uh, we keep keeping in mind the low cost system, we have looked for low cost damage satellite dish to be reused. The dish concentration used in this study has been recited from uh, the storage of uh, our high school of signal, which went through a reform process to make it back uh, to its original form. In addition to the advent of their cost. We have benefit from the lightness and uh, durability because it's made from an aluminium alloy. Uh, in this study, the reflector consists of several uh, back silver glass mirror that cover the interior surface of parabola. Improvement for the use of this type of mirror for parabolic dish uh, concentrators lays on thickness of the glass plate. The lower thickness uh, is the higher the reflectivity of the mirror will be, thus allowing them to bend uh, to obtain, obtain desired parabolic shape and maximize efficiency. So we have used uh, we have the cut uh, mirror into uh, three by three centimeter square. So the money uh, for, for the tracking system. Uh, we are a system of gear and wheel bearing that are controlled by operator. 
who manually adjust the position of solar concentrator in order to collect maximum solar radiation throughout the day. The method is often used in small scale or, or, uh, or experimental solar projects as it is less expensive and less complex than aut automated tracking system. The support, uh, is, uh, support is an element that carries the device. It's made uh, of uh, round tube welded to electric arc to reduce weight and uh, facilitate, facilitate mobility and storage. The parabolic concentrate the way tracking system to reach the maximum solar uh, flux. We adopt very simple tracking mechanism based on cylinder and the uh, rotating wheel, as we said, to turn the dish to the position uh, to, to follow the azimuthal and the uh, zenithal angle uh, of the same. Solar receiver converts concentrate solar radiation into usable heat. The receiver uh, surface must have following characteristics. So good conductivity and thermal diffusion and an observer factor as close as possible to the unit. So uh, when development of each part of solar parabolic concentrate and we have proceeded to assi uh, assemble uh, different components together in order to obtain the complete system which is presented in the, in the picture. Our concentrators are now ready to be used and uh, evaluated. So in order to evaluate the performance of our P PDC, important parameters must, must be identified such as solar irradiance incident on the, the, the concentrator, wind velocity, ambient temperature, angle of the inclusion of the receiver from the horizontal, uh, and uh, so on. The ideal operating Operation of solar concentrator is when solar addition is parallel to its axis of uh, focus. We have chosen a period of time when the sky is clear to avoid the shadow effect uh, on our system. Uh, by using a manual tracking system, the parabolic PDC are uh, redirected to the same position, so uh, azimuthal and uh, zenithal uh, angle. Every 30 minutes, and we, we evaluate uh, the uh, the target at the focal point. So we notice that temperature evolution in respect to time follows the famous bell curve, which increases rapidly at the beginning from uh, nine o'clock to uh, twelve, and then stabilizes between uh, in this uh, this uh, period between. Uh, uh, 12 30 and uh, uh, 40 pm at about uh, 110 degrees Celsius. The maximum operation condition of solar concentration is, between, is in this period. The maximum achieved temperature at uh, 30 pm is uh, 110 degrees Celsius. So uh, the, the, the the diameter of the parabolic dish concentration is uh, is uh, 0 0.70 meter, which affects the surface of parabola and thus the, the red effect on, on the focal point. So, so as a conclusion, uh, in this uh, research, we have carried out an experimental study on parabolic dish concentrator with the DL axis tracking system in order to harvest solar energy uh, by using low cost and using uh, recycled components. So, for starting publication of parabolic dish concentrators, many steps forward should be considered during the design. So, uh, firstly, we have started by determining system specific specification and select the appropriate type of tracking system. After that, we choose the appropriate material for the collector and the support structure. So, the investigation of uh, uh, temperature evolution as function of time at box uh, spot for parabolic dish uh, concentrate has uh, had the famous bell form. So, uh, we have demonstrated that uh, the concentration uh, Temperature at the spot box depends on several factors. And as the uh, outlooks, so, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, task has been done uh, after that. So we have investigated various reflector material uh, uh, like uh, aluminium as a, as a reflector due to its uh, 
to uh, low uh, low price also and the facility in uh, in uh, sticking on the surface of parabolic and we have compared the performance of uh, aluminium uh, with uh, with the uh, mirrors so uh, uh, after that we are now uh, 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 combining it with automatic sun tracking system so we have uh, replaced the uh, manual uh, system with automatic using uh, electric uh, uh, cylinder electric shock to control the, the motion uh, of uh, our uh, our system if you uh, allow me i will show you the video of our system uh, By using uh, the, the command of uh, Jack, we control the the, the motion of the cylinder, uh, uh, motion of the parabolic dish concentrator, and uh, and we are uh, we are uh, working on uh, this project. Uh, so, thanks for your uh, attention and. Uh, Okay, uh, thank you very much, for Dr. Princeta, for a very interesting presentation. And uh, another question from audience, one short question. Um, may I have a question? Is this you did it, this equipment for individual uh, user or it's for just uh, in general use? Since it's, uh, when I and I am not wrong, but I am not wrong. In Mediterranean countries, I see the very simple way of heating just simply to expose the tank on the roof and this tank with water is heated directly by the sun and in this yes. way if we could uh, use such a system as you develop here individual on the roof it probably will improve efficiency of these things what do you think about that so uh, uh, this is the first uh, first uh, first step in uh, in uh, our research so this is the okay. only prototype prototype so we uh, we okay. we start with prototype and uh, we will uh, elaborate each system and try to control each system and after that we uh, we are thinking uh, to develop a system uh, okay for for okay, uh, for uh, specific uh, use okay okay thank you very much thank you very much thank now you. we go thank to you. the next uh, to the next presentation next presentation will be done by the Dr. Uh, Samuel uh, Aitin. Altin, sorry, I'm so sorry, from Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Yozgat Bozog University, from uh, Turkey. And uh, the title is uh, Differential Evaluation Algorithm Based Very Fast Renewable Energy System Optimization Tool Design. Please, doctor, please, please present. You have a 15 minutes time and 12 minutes for presentation, three minutes for discussion. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, hello again. You're and my colleagues, uh, but uh, I can't use the screen because uh, my uh, college should uh, drop his screen. Uh, Mr. Benzetta, could you uh, please uh, drop your screen? Uh, it's okay, uh, could you see? Yes, sure, sure, it's, it's clear. Uh, yes, hello, dear uh, chair and my colleagues. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about differential evolution algorithm based very fast renewable energy system optimization tool design. I am uh, Jamil Alton from Yozgat Bozok University, Turkey. And now I am starting. <clears throat> uh, this is the content. Uh, I will tell aim of my study, state of the art, originality of my work material and methods section and results and uh, conclusion uh, section. Uh, as my uh, colleagues uh, state before, the use of environmentally uh, renewable energy sources has become inevitable due to the environmental damage of fossil fuel energy sources and the fact that they are unsustainable due to their finite nature. Solar and wind energies are the leading renewable energy sources. Renewable energy sources are more efficient when they are used in hybrid because they complement each other. In other words, continuity of uh, production is ensured because while the panels don't produce at night, 
the wind turbine produces. While the wind turbine does not produce in home windless wood, whether the panels produce. Uh, in addition, the efficiency of hybrid systems is increased by adding batteries to the hybrid system when production is higher than consumption and storing the energy and using the stored energy when consumption is higher than production. Hybrid systems become the most efficient when they are optimized. In other words, it is important to use the optimum number of components. Therefore, interest in the optimization of hybrid renewable energy sources has increased considerably in recent years, and much research has been done uh, and continues to be done in, on this subject. Uh, the most commonly used software for the optimization of hybrid renewable energy sources is Homer. But Homer has two main advantages, like high computational cost and long optimization time, challenging search space generation process based on trial and error. Aim of the study is to provide solutions to these disadvantages of Homer. How Homer works, as you see in screen, firstly, uh, we add the components, PV panel or uh, wind turbine, batteries or generators, then uh, we add uh, our load, uh, primary load inputs, uh, as you see here, uh, for 24 hours in a day. Uh, and then uh, we add some uh, price uh, PV inputs, uh, like price, uh, replacement price, or operation and maintenance price, and the difficult uh, place is here, as I put uh, stars uh, on here. Uh, as you see on the top, uh, this is the optimized system. After uh, updating uh, trial and error these values, because uh, the user cannot know uh, how much PV panel uh, would feed his system or how much uh, wind turbine uh, needed or how much battery needed. And this section uh, is comprised trial and error from beginning to end. And uh, the user can update uh, five times or 10 times for uh, reach the optimal solution in Homer. Uh, this is the uh, most difficult part of uh, using Homer. So I uh, bring a solution for uh, this section in my study. Uh, and uh, again, for batteries, converters are uh, other so other sources. We add price informations and uh, sizes to consider section uh, for optimization. Uh, this is the search space generation, uh, as I put here. Uh, stars uh, si uh, space uh, search spaces generated and. Homer selects the most optimum uh, components from this uh, search space. Again, we add uh, so meteorological uh, data uh, for uh, solar or wind speed in Homer. Uh, then uh, economic section, economic in inputs, uh, like real interest rate or project lifetime. And the important uh, constraints, because optimization, uh, all optimization uh, process have uh, some constraints. Uh, we, here we have two uh, constraints in uh, Homer. One of them, uh, annual capacity shortage, which we are using this, and minimum renewable fraction. As you see, uh, as I stated before, the search space generation is a hard part of the Homer because uh, user cannot know how much PV panel needed, how much uh, the other uh, components needed. Uh, firstly, it starts uh, random uh, random values, then it uh, update for the search uh, Homer's uh, search space errors. 
So uh, this is the uh, negative part of the homer. Uh, okay, what solution? The solution is uh, using metaheuristic uh, algorithms. Uh, metaheuristic uh, algorithms are efficient because they can easily handle a range of complexities. Uh, a class of optimization algorithms known as metaheuristics aims to tackle challenging optimization problems by mimicking social or natural phenomena. In particular, multi-objective optimization metaheuristics are best suited for optimal hybrid renewable energy sources. This is because the, uh, the HRES models in incorporate multiple criteria such as cost, performance, and reliability. Uh, this is the state of uh, art of my uh, study. Uh, there are lots of uh, metaheuristic algorithms used uh, optimization of hybrid renewable sources uh, before my study, uh, as you can see here. Uh, but uh, there is a lot of cost functions and reliability parameters, uh, but uh, all uh, nearly all uh, papers include L LPSP, loss of power supply probability, reliability parameter. But we are using capacity shortage. And this is my uh, originality of my work. Because uh, before me, there is no uh, paper which uses uh, metaheuristic algorithms with capacity shortage. Uh, ac according to literature research and review papers, capacity shortage is not used before with metaheuristics. This is the originality of uh, the work, as I state. This is a um, paper which uh, printed in this year, uh, Hussein, uh, Hussein's paper. Uh, as you see here, uh, here the uh, reliability parameters which used with metaheuristics but uh, as can, uh, you can see here, there is no capacity shortage used before. Uh, uh, because of the, my limited time, uh, I will pass. Okay, the Dr. Altin, you have to go to conclusion since I see that you are already in introduction. Uh, we have, the time is already over, but please okay. go, go ahead. Okay, yes, yes, I see, okay. Uh, this is the outline of my work uh, as in Homer, uh, we are, uh, input data, uh, entering input data, then the optimization process like here. Uh, and we are using uh, a meteoristic uh, differential uh, evolution algorithm, uh, like genetic al algorithm. Uh, you see here the uh, process flow chart. And this is my... Uh, Flow chart of the dispatch strategy. Strategy. Dispatch strategy is concerned with the control of energy flows between the components, and this is the economical flow chart because we are making a hard economical calculation. And this is the flow chart of uh, economical calculations. And uh, this is my results. Uh, we tested the system with three different uh, hybrid renewable system. One of uh, it is uh, like uh, you see here, include PV panel, uh, wind turbine, batteries, and inverter. Uh, inverter. Uh, we make economical calculation uh, comparisons with Homer, electrical comparisons, and uh, the most important, we make a computation uh, time uh, comparison. As you see uh, here, uh, there is. Uh, 1% or 2% uh, difference between Homer results. They are very close to each other. But when we check the computation time, uh, my system is uh, superior from Homer uh, because uh, it uh, makes the optimization 936 uh, seconds and uh, differential evaluation is make it, it 83 seconds. And the other one, a uh, wind turbine battery and in inverter. Uh, as you see here, uh, again, the results are very close with Homer and computation time is very uh, superior. Uh, 
compared to homer and the last one is pv battery and inverter system uh, like uh, again the results are same but uh, computation time is uh, good in the differential evaluation algorithm and uh, as i stated before there is no uh, capacity shortage used in the meteoristic algorithms and uh, meteoristic algorithms are faster than homer here uh, supporting uh, papers uh, to my uh, study is uh, papers uh, says uh, meteoristics are uh, superior than homer and uh, here the uh, review articles which support me there is no uh, there is no capacity shortage parameter is used before with meteoristics uh, algorithm so uh, i am concluding in this study it is aimed to design a faster and more user friendly optimization tool than the homer software according to results and supporting studies in the literature the targeted aim has been achieved in future studies a tool that can both generate realistic load, wind speed, and radiation data synthetically and make optimization with these data can be designed. Thus, a large amount of input-output data required for optimization with deep learning or machine learning can be produced, and these methods can be included in the optimization processes. Thank you for listening to me. Okay, thank you, Dr. Altin, for your presentation. And uh, since the time is already over, one question from audience. Do you have any have a question? I think that your investigation are very interesting, for example, for island mode of any any load. Island mode, when we have a, a photovoltaic, when we have a wind uh, mill, uh, when we have a battery, and then we can combine it and, and do it. Okay, thank you very all much. Right, can, now we are good. Uh, all right, the time is yeah. over, or uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Uh, hi, uh, uh, my name is Sajjat from uh, Tallinn University of Technology. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, if you go back uh -huh. to the results, I saw that the Homer results uh, are uh, base, are better than what you have obtained. Uh, yeah, for example, here, you see total annual capital cost is around 570 for Homer. Uh, why do you think the system operator should use uh, your algorithm uh, compared to Homer? because uh, building this kind of uh, renewable energy sources is like uh, a planning and uh, maybe less cost would be more interesting for the system operator. If you have any comments, I would appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, the small differ uh, differences uh, because of the uh, this uh, flow chart, uh, this dispatch strategy. The dispatch strategy is uh, belong to me. Uh, I de designed uh, this dispatch strategy. But I don't know Homer uh, use which space strategies. So uh, this is the main uh, difference of my uh, results and uh, between my results and Homer. I see. Just a minor comment. Also, it's highly dependent on your the parameters you select for the optimization algorithms for any of meta heuristics. So maybe that can be the reason for faster. If you wider your research space, maybe the time would be equal and you would get better results. But thank you very much for the presentation. Good luck. Thanks. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions from audience? If not, once again, thank you very much. And we will go to the last presentation. The last presentations will be done for by the PhD students. Lukas Demel from uh, uh, Czech uh, Department of Electric Engineering, Ostrava, Czech Republic. And title is the use of the imperialistic competitive algorithm in optimizing the setting of the tram speed control in the development MATLAB simulating environment. Please go ahead. Fifteen minutes. Yes, thank you. Uh, as I said before, I'm here on behalf of my colleague, Mr. Ciganek, who fell ill, and I was asked to present instead of him. I don't have much time, but I will try my best to present it to you, to prepare. Uh, then the name of our paper sounds complex, but I will try to explain it in simple terms. Uh, yes. uh, with the expected development of electric vehicles, the importance of research into their parameters, especially consumption of electric energy while driving the vehicle is increasing. For the energy calcula calculation, the time integration method of the ve vehicle's instant instantaneous power 
which is needed to overcome traction resistance in individual driving modes, was optimized. A dynamic model of the tram vehicle was created in MATLAB simulating environment. Uh, some theoretical principles. The most important part of the dynamic model of the tram vehicle is the pulse width modulation converter, which is controlled by current and speed regulators. The speed regulator replaces the driver's actions, and this is what we try to optimize, what we try to find the best algorithm for. A continuous controller was first used in the tram technology. The mathematical description of the ideal continuous proportional integrative controller equation can be seen on the slide. The heuristic method of setting the PS proportional sum summation control is an approximate method of setting the controller. It is based on the method of critical parameters of the controller. It is referred to as a Ziegler, Ziegler Nichols after the scientist who invented it. It is based on experimental principles. The resulting setting only approaches the optimal setting. The following procedure is used for the setting of the controller. A constant signal is applied to the input of the speed regulator. The summation component is set to infinity and the gain value of the regulator is increased to critical value and the control circuit oscillates. At the output of the regulator's regulated system, there is a periodic waveform that you can see on the picture. Uh, the advantages of this Ziegler Nichols method is that the parameter setting is uh, very simple. It's simple to calculate and it, it, is, um, it was and it is used in practice. The disadvantage of this method resides in that it's only approximate values of the control parameters. In the case of more demanding applications, it is necessary to perform optimization. Uh, the second algorith algorithm we used is the imperialistic competitive algorithm. Uh, it basically means the creation of the initial value population by means of stoch stochastic methods with even distribution for substitution in the proportional and summation parameters of the speed controller, as shown in the picture. For the experiment of calculating energy consumption by time integration of the instantaneous performance of ray, ve ray ve vehicle, in our case, a tram, a model was created in MATLAB simulating environment. To verify the model values, the output currents and voltages from uh, Vřesinská traction, traction transformer station were measured while the tram was running in its section. Uh, the terrain plays a big role in rave vehicle consumption. So first, a digital model of the track was compiled from a geo geological website, and it was used to calculate the extent and curve resistance as seen the Im in the image. Uh, here, here you can see the simulating model of the tram. Uh, it was done, done for tram type T6A5. The tram drive model works in two quadrants, simulating its driving motion and its braking. Uh, since there is not much time, I won't go into it. Uh, it's described in our paper. You can look at it in there. Uh, to verify the model values, the output currents and voltages from the tram's traction transformer station were measured, as you can see on the left picture. It shows the measuring devices for calculating the energy consumption. Uh, on the right side, on the right picture, you can see the T6A5 tram, uh, which was used for the uh, experimental measuring of the power consumption. Uh, the tram, the vehicle was controlled manually, as it usually is. Um, this picture shows a comparison of electricity consumption during the tram travel, uh, calcul calculated from the measured and modeled values. The red line shows the real measured values. The green line shows the Ziegler Nichols method of setting the speed of, the, of the speed control in the model. And the blue line shows the ICA algorithm that we used in our model. Uh, 
do you use evolution method, method of optimizing optimization inspired by human social processes proved to be suitable even for evolving uh, evolving even for solving technical optimization problems uh, this article solved the problem of calculating the ps speed control constant for the chosen tram vehicle by the means of simulation in the matlab simulating environment the Ziegler nichols method was used in the first setting of the controller this method is simple but it also has its, its disadvantages the second setting procedure used was the imperialistic competitive algorithm this method is more co complicated but it achieves more precise results in the calculation of electrical energy consumption the, the model using the setting of the control by the means of the ICA method resulted in higher accuracy in predicting the energy consumption compared to other methods compared to the measured results of the electrical energy consumption during a tram ride there was a 93 percent correspondence using the ICA method whereas when the Ziegler Nichols method was used for the setting of the controller the model resulted results corresponded by 75 percent with the measured values the accuracy of some other models used by different authors showed the following results a dynamic and energy model used by different authors indicates a deviation from the measured data between 1.4 and 27.9 percent so this model can be quite accurate but also quite inaccurate uh, some other authors used the energy consumption and emission models and they report an average deviation of 15 percent this shows that the ICA model we used with its devi dev deviation of 7 percent is quite accurate uh, that's okay. all for me I do it quite, quite quickly because of the time so we are we are time but if you have any question, I can I can try answer it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation, Lucas. And could you could you explain me why it is a name imperialistic competitive? Why why the name? It's imperialistic. Uh, because, because, what does it mean? Yeah, yes, because this this method it was uh, yeah, how do I say it? Uh, it uses it uses the human. Uh, the human uh, uh, behavior mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it, it 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 functions like you you make you make a several population like humans would in in the in the times in the history and the population that becomes more more closer to your results that you want they become stronger and then they quote, quote unquote become an imperialistic country. Okay. So it's, 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 it's based on human evolution. It's, it's okay. Social express. So social, social, yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. Therefore, thank you very much. Any question for audience? Okay. If not, gentlemen, thank you very much. We are exactly on time. Uh, I think that Darius will have no any, any question for us. And thank you. If I would like to to thank all presenters for a very well for a good done presentation for very interesting presentations. Uh, however, however, it was not many questions for audience, but it was uh, very interesting. Therefore, thank you very much, and I hope that the next time we will see face to face in in Palanca as well. And I close this session. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.